Hello to everybody who comes in. We are going to be analyzing quadratic functions today and tomorrow. So get ready for a fun trip, which was which will be a lot more fun than the last time we did this. OK. Here we have a function. It's a quadratic highest power two. It's a trinomial three terms. Negative 5x squared plus 13x minus 7. I guarantee you cannot factor this. We are going to answer the questions. OK, and then these will be in um, week 9. So here we go. First question. Is this cupped up or cupped down? Remember that quadratic functions quadratic functions are either cupped up. Let's write it out, cupped up. Or they are cupped down. Now a sure way to tell, of course, is to graph it. But if you don't want to do that, the other sure way to tell <clears throat> is to look at the leading term, the highest degree term. And notice that the coefficient is negative. That means you're cupped down. So let's underline that. Cup down. So it's going to look like this. And if that's the X axis, not terribly well drawn. Let me try to do a decent job. There. Then this will be an X intercept or a zero. Comma. X intercept. And this will be a zero, x-intercept, zero, z-e-r-o, x-intercept, this will be the vertex called HK. And notice it's a, a relative maximum, a relative maximum point. <clears throat> and K is the relative maximum. That's all your book calls it, even though when I was a student, I learned that for a quadratic, since there's only one high, one high point or low point, you can call it an absolute max or an absolute min. But we must answer the way the book wants us to. OK, now the y-intercept. The y-intercept has to be the easiest point to find. B cos, here it is right here. This is the y-intercept.
Okay. So, um, and of course, the way you would write this would be as an ordered pair, right as an ordered pair. The y intercept is negative seven. You always put a zero in the first position for the, for the y intercept. But see, this number is exactly the same as the number, the constant at the end. Okay, now we're not going to use the discriminant. We don't teach that anymore. Instead, we are going to find the zeros of the function with this, the quadratic formula. Okay, um, okay, sorry, my mind drifted. All right, so let's do this. We have to find out what A, B, and C are. A is negative five. B is 13, and C is negative seven. And so, we are going to write down this. Okay, X equals negative five, um, and 13 and negative 7. So, 13, negative 7, all right. And it's positive 13. That doesn't happen all the time, does it? Okay, so we're going to have x equals negative b plus or minus, well, no, I'm not going to write that because it's already written there. Instead, negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 13 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Now let me double check that C is indeed negative 7, B is positive 13, and A is negative 5. Okay. All right. I am going to pull up my calculator. Make it somewhat bigger. All right. Well, whatever. Um, 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 okay, 13 squared. Minus 4. Times negative 5. Times negative 7. Double check that. Yes, that's right. I just want to find out what that is. It's 29. That is not a perfect square. So X equals negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 29. All over negative 10. And so X equals negative 13 plus the square root of 29 over negative 10. 
and x equals negative 13 minus the square root of 29 over negative 10. Now we've got to do that silly thing with that, that minus on the bottom. Pull it out front. So x equals negative parentheses, negative 13 plus the square root of 29 over 10. And x equals we're going to do the same thing to this. Negative, negative 13 minus the square root of 29 over 10. And so that is going to give us, working with this one first, x equals positive 13 minus the square root of 29 over 10, and x equals 13, because we're having to distribute the minus sign here. That minus sign there and there, and this minus sign there and there. 13 plus the square root of 29 over 10. Okay, and we really should get an approximation of where it is, just so if you're graphing, you know about where to put it. But um, let's just wait. Right now, we've got our zeros. And if you must know, this one, you have to wait till you're done to find out. But this one, the one with the minus sign in the middle, is going to be the one on the left. So this is going to be 13, 13 minus the square root of 29 over 10. And this one, just get rid of that. This one is going to be 13 plus the square root of 29 over 10. And I know that because a positive number minus any number is going to be smaller than a positive number plus a positive number. So another way to write this, of course, would be 13 plus or minus the square root of 29 over 10. So those are the zeros of the function, which are better written here, quite honestly. I think I prefer that. Okay, now do you agree with what I did? Do you understand what I did? Okay, I'm going to assume you do. Now that we have the zeros, and these are the zeros, okay? So the zeros are this. This is two numbers. With the plus or minus, it's two numbers. The zeros are 13 minus the square root of 29 over 10, and 13 plus the square root of 29 over 10. There are two zeros. We could even call this Z1 equals 13 minus the square root of 29 over 10, and Z2 equals 13 plus the square root of 29 over 10. Okay. Now write a quadratic write write the quadratic function in factored form. 
OK, well, remember that F of X. Equals negative 5 X squared. Plus 13 X. Minus 7. And now what we're going to do is use this factor formula. To write it in factored form. OK, A is the leading coefficient, which is negative 5. So this is going to be negative 5 times x minus 13 minus the square root of 29 over 10. And that's one number being held together by that fraction bar. So I can just write it like that. And then x minus 13 plus the square root of 29 over 10. And that's how you would write this in factored form. See, not every answer is pretty. But now, you know, when we did the homework, we had to assume that A was 1. But in this problem, A is definitely not 1. It's negative 5. It's the leading coefficient of the quadratic function. All right, now we have to write the x-intercepts as ordered pairs. And here I wrote out a little formula for you, z1 comma 0 and z2 comma 0. So this is going to be 13 minus the square root of 29 over 10 comma 0. And 13 plus the square root of 29 over 10 comma 0. And that's how you would write the x-intercepts, and that's how the x-intercepts are different from the zeros when the zeros are real numbers. Okay, now this is the end of the x-intercepts part. So let's go back up for a minute and look at this. Let me make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so first question, because the uh, leading term is negative, this is a cupped down parabola. Of course, the graph is going to be a parabola because your highest power is two. When the highest power is two and you've got a function, then the graph is going to be either cupped down or cupped up like this. The graph would have been cupped up if that had been positive 5x squared. Now the y-intercept, you take the constant at the end, put it in the y position, and then zero in the x position, and this gives you a wonderful y-intercept. couldn't have a better intercept, y-intercept anyway. Now, the zeros, oh, I didn't go back and answer these. 
These are real numbers. They don't have an I in them, so they're not complex. They're real numbers on the X axis, but they are irrational. That is, if you if you were to put the square root of 29 in your calculator, you would just get a run on decimal. And you could never math frack it. You could never turn it into a fraction. That's what an irrational number is. Okay, so we have real irrational numbers for our zeros. And there are two of them, one with a minus and one with a plus. So there are two, two zeros, and they're real irrational. Real dash irrational. They're also conjugates, and I don't know why we don't call them conjugates. We do call the complex numbers conjugates. But I'm not going to take on the whole math establishment over that. Now, the way you write a quadratic function in factored form is you use this formula. And since we're using a quadratic that has only two zeros, I would write it like that. If I were working on a cubic, I would have three zeros. A times X minus C1 times X minus C2 times X minus C3. But there are just two zeros here, so there are just two factors. And here they are. And this is the leading coefficient. All the formulas that you're going to need are here on that, that sheet of paper. And there are blank ones in, um, uh, in one of the headings under week nine in modules. Miss hey, Barbara. Yes. Uh, where it says write the quadratic function in factored form, uh, is it supposed to be a negative where it's where the X is located? Is that supposed to be a minus or is that supposed to be an equal sign? No, this is a minus. OK. When you're writing it in factored form, it's just a minus sign. Oh, yeah. OK, cool. Excellent. OK, any more questions from anybody about all of the zeros X intercept stuff? because we're about to move on to the vertex stuff. One last question I had, Miss Barbara. Sure. Does it matter at all? <clears throat> does it matter at all what uh, we, does it matter in what location we put our x-intercepts? Uh, yes, it does. Cool. Did I not ask you to do that? Yeah, I did. Here's yeah. a, here's a, a blank for the x-intercepts. Yes. And here's the blank for the zeros. Okay. All right, the vertex, here are your formulas. We call the vertex HK. H is always going to be negative B over 2A. K is always going to be the number you get when you take the H number and put it in for all the X's. So, let's do it.
I suppose I should have written that down there, shouldn't I? Oh, well. Okay, and you could probably get away with writing this as 1.3, because when you divide 13 by 10, you get 1.3. It's a terminating decimal, it ends, so that means it's an exact answer, unless they say they want um, fractions. You know how they are. Yes, now, for K, we've got F of H, okay? F of 1.3 equals negative five times 1.3 squared plus 13 times 1.3 minus seven. I think that's right. Yes. All right. No, I am not going to do that by hand. I suppose I could, but I do have kind of a lazy character. Shouldn't admit it. Bad, bad, lazy. Yeah. Okay, so. Negative five, parentheses, 1.3, parentheses, close squared, plus 13, parentheses, 1.3, minus seven. Yes, that looks right, so. 1.45. Now, I want to make sure that that's right. Okay. So it is positive because it was negative over negative. Now it's positive. Yes. Okay. So K is going to be 1.45. And now we can cheat writing the vertex. Not that I would ever advocate that. 1.3 comma 1.45, or if they're absolutely, they being the, uh, my math lab people, if they are absolutely, totally demanding Ah, uh, no, I'm having trouble here finding my little scooter. OK, well then, see if I care. There. Um, we can use our calculator to math frac this. So that's 13 over 10, I remember that, but I can math frac 1.45. Okay, so I'm going to math, pull it up, pull it up, there. I'm going to math frac that, math frac, enter, enter. 29 over 20, and you can pretend you always know it. Which of course we didn't, but don't tell anyone. 29 over 20. Okay. Now don't get your hopes set on decimals. You never know what my math lab is going to do about that. Um, equation of the axis of symmetry is always going to have an X because it's a vertical line. So X equals the negative B over 2A number. 
So your axis of symmetry is going to be, and always is, x equals the h number, which is 13 over 10, or 1.3, whichever you're using and can get away with. Okay, you have to memorize that. Your, your cup down parabola has an invisible line going through the center, going through the vertex, and that vertex is HK. You know, it changes for every problem. It's HK. But the equation of that axis of symmetry is always going to be x equals h. Always. Okay? Yes. Okay. Now, is the vertex a minimum lowest or maximum highest point? For a cup down parabola, it's the very highest point. So it's going to be a maximum point. Whoop, maximum point. What is the minimum or the maximum value? That's the K number. So we have to look back here. It's 1.45. That's your K number, 1.45 or 29 over 20. Twenty nine over twenty, I mean. What that means, wherever the x axis is, this is the very highest y value. This is uh, y equals twenty nine over twenty or one point forty five. OK, so if your y axis Say, say your y axis is here. Then that would be, and then your x axis would be here. Your y axis is here. I haven't graphed it yet, so I don't really know. But um, that would be 1.45 on the y axis, the very highest y value reached. by f of x, the very biggest number it's going to have. Guaranteed. OK, now. I was pretty scared of this formula when I was a student, when I was first learning it. I got absolutely whiny, but it ends up by now you already know everything you need. You know what the leading coefficient is, that's A. You know what H is, that's 13 over 10 or 1.3. And you know what K is, it's 29 over 20 or 1.45. So. This is not a problem for us at all. F of X equals negative five parentheses X minus 13 tenths squared plus 29 twentieths. Is it 29 or 21? 
back up here. 29. It is 29, okay. Yep, 1.45, 29 over 20, okay. So that's how you do this. This right here. And if you were of a mind to do it, and I don't know why you would, but if you were, you could square this, then multiply what you get when you square this, by negative five and then add it to 29 twentieths and you would get what you started with, which is negative five X squared plus 13 X minus seven. You really, really, really would. Have we covered transformations in this class? Anyway, this is also called the transformation formula for a quadratic. Okay, if somebody comes along and says, tell me what the domain of f of x equals negative 5x squared plus 13x minus 7 is. Well, you know it's a quadratic, so that's the easiest question in the world. Negative infinity to positive infinity. If they want it in set builder notation, that's how you answer. If they want it in interval notation, that's how you answer it. Now the range You've got to think about this. You've got a cup down parabola. The range is all of the Y coordinates. In each of these points all the way along here. They're going to go from negative infinity down here all the way up to. 1.45. And that's the highest you're going to get. So the K number. If you've got a cup down parabola, this is going to be the range. Oh, no, this is going to be the range, yes. The numbers on the Y axis that match up with the graph. They'll only go as high as the maximum value, K. But that's for cup down, and we have a cup down. So, if you state the range for this quadratic function, it's going to be negative infinity, comma, 29 over 20, or 1.45 with a bracket. That's because Y actually equals 1.45 at the vertex. So you use a bracket. Then come all those intervals of increase and intervals of decrease, and they always mess everybody up. So let us stop and think. We have a cupped down parabola, and this is the H number on the x-axis, which we know is 
Okay. Now, if this is the x-axis, remember that from left to right, our parabola is going up, 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 and until it hits the vertex. And then it starts going down, 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 down. But the way we state that is on the X axis, not on the Y axis. So the interval of increase is going to be from negative infinity out here all the way in to H, which is the X coordinate. The Y coordinate is here. The X coordinate is at H. So from negative infinity to H, we have this which is constantly and forever increasing, 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 boop, it levels out and then it starts to go down. And all that action occurs at H. H is also called the turning point. Actually, HK is also called the turning point. That's one of its names. state the open interval on which the function is decreasing. Well, here's where the function is going down, so this is where it's decreasing. So from H to positive infinity, this is going down, 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 down. So it's decreasing. Decreasing. Increasing. And yeah, here it is down here. State the open interval. That means you don't use brackets. State the open interval on which the function is decreasing. And for a cup down parabola, it's going to go from the H number to positive infinity. Decreasing cup down. Uh-oh, that's a boo-boo. Okay. I am glad I found that. Oh, no, wait, decreasing. Yes, that's right. For a cup down parabola, H to positive infinity. So, yes. Yes, okay, I've got to get rid of that. And I will at some point. Oh, I can't. All right, well, I'll show them. I'll just do that. Oops. So our interval of decrease, let's see, the interval of increase is going to be from negative infinity way out here into 1.3 or 13 over 10 only parentheses and down here from h to positive infinity h is 1.3 so 1.3 to positive infinity and that's the interval on which the function is decreasing
there now. Discussion about the vertex stuff. Yeah, from question seven down to question 14. Let's do another one. Um, and I do have another one. So let me save this. And then, yeah. I'm going to cheat. OK. Here we have a quadratic function. F of X equals negative X squared minus 5X plus 5. Um, this is a quadratic, so it's either going to look like this or like this, and it's a function, very important. It's not gonna have that little doohickey in it, but you know. Okay, now, since the leading term is positive, we're going to have a cupped up parabola and not a cupped down parabola. Okay, so this is going to be cupped up because the A number, 7, is positive. The Y-intercept, I take that 5 at the end, write it in the Y's, in the Y-coordinates place, and then put a 0 in the X-coordinates place. The reason is this point is on the y-axis, and on the y-axis, um, x is always zero. Okay, and I need to take that out. So let us come down here and say that A is 7 and B is negative 5 and C is positive 5. Because this is asking for the zeros. So here we go, x equals negative b, so negative, negative 5, plus or minus the square root of negative 5 squared minus 4 times a times c over, <laughs> wait a minute, 4 times 7 times positive 5 over 2a and a is 7. So that's going to be x equals 5 
plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 140 over 14. Now, get the calculator. Here, calculator. No, I don't want PowerPoint. I want a calculator. Twenty five minus one forty is negative one fifteen. Now, something I want to do, I want to make absolutely certain that 4 times 7 times 5 is 140. So 4 times 7 times 5 is 140. Yes. Okay. So this is going to be 5 plus or minus the square root of negative 115 over 14. We can't have a negative number underneath a square root in the real number system. So we have just been drop kicked into the complex number system. So I'm going to have X equals five plus or minus the square root of negative one times 115 over four. Now I have to see, no, not that, I don't have to see that. Miss Barbara, see. did you yes. see 14 at the bottom? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got you, Miss Barbara. You're great. Okay, now I want to break down 115. 115 divided by X. And the reason I'm doing this is I just want to make sure it hasn't got a perfect square in it. So I push second and then graph. So 1 times 115, 2 times 57.5, no. 5 times 23, Doesn't look good, does it? I am going to hazard a guess that we do not have any perfect squares that are factors of 115. So, x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of 15, 115 all over 14. That's the reason I pulled out that negative one because negative one equals I. This is going to be X equals five plus or minus I times the square root of 115 over 14. Now, in intermediate algebra, the book lets you stop there, but not in college. We, th this is a complex number, so we have to put it in complex form, which is X equals a 
plus or minus B form, BI. So, for that reason, this is what I have to do. X equals 5 over 14 plus or minus the square root of 1, 1, 5 over 14 times I. So now the A number is 5 over 14 plus or minus the B number, which is the square root of 1, 1, 5 over 14 times I. A plus BI or A minus BI. Okay, those are your zeros. 5 over 14 minus the square root of 115 over 14 I comma 5 over 14 plus the square root of 115 over 14. And those are our two zeros, but they're complex conjugates. Ah, not if I don't put my I up there. There. So let us do this. They're complex conjugates. The zeros. The zeros are complex conjugates, and there are two. Conjugates occur two at a time, so there could not be two. Now that's pretty tricky, but are we gonna let that stop us? Heck no. We know what our zeros are now. So, f of x equals the a number the A number is 7. Times. X minus. Parentheses. 5 over 14. Minus the square root of 115. Over 14. I. times, should have used brackets. I should have used brackets. Okay. There. Okay, bracket, 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 X minus five over 14 plus, <coughs> The square root of 115 over 14 I. Close parentheses, close brackets. Now I can, if I choose to, distribute the minus sign. That'll make it a little bit easier, easier to write because I can use parentheses, x minus 5 fourteenths minus times minus is plus, plus the square root of 115 over 14 i times x minus 5 14 5 uh -huh. and, oh, 5 fourteenths plus, no, 
minus, minus. This is going to be minus, minus. The square root of 115 over 14 i. And you can leave it that way. But either one is acceptable to me. But see, even zeros can can be used to write write um, to write f of x in um, um, factored form. But you know what? Complex conjugate zeros cannot be used for. They cannot be used for x intercepts because they're not in the real number system. And only numbers in the real number system are on the x axis or the y axis, but x intercepts are on the x axis. So we have to write none. Only real numbers allowed to be x intercepts. Now the vertex. Okay, we do it the same way. The vertex is HK. H equals negative B over 2A equals negative negative 5 over 2 times 7. <clears throat> negative B, which is negative 5, over 2 times 7. That will be five sevenths. OK, and I think we actually get a repeating decimal from that, so we can't use decimals. Doggone it. But thank goodness we have a calculator. Miss Barbara. Okay. Huh? Wouldn't it be 14? 14. 14. Yes. yes, it would. Yes, it would. You keep on me. You keep on me. There you go. It's even uglier now. <laughs> I just said anything. K is going to equal 7 times 5 fourteenths squared minus 5 times 5 fourteenths Minus 5 times 5 fourteenths plus 5. And you bet I'm going to use my calculator. Clear. Clear. Well, heck. Clear. OK. Um, 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 all right. See, this is the hard part. Seven parentheses, five divided by 14 squared minus five parentheses, 5 divided by 14, plus 5. Now I can hit enter and then go math frac, or I can just go directly to math frac. Math frac, enter. 
115 over 28. Ugly. 115 over 28. There. So our HK is going to be 5 fourteenths is 115 over 28. Um, wow, that is passively ugly. But that's okay, we have our formulas. Now, the, the equation of the axis of symmetry is always going to be x equals the h number. So x equals 5 fourteenths. And as long as I'm not graphing it, I don't have to worry about trying to find 5 fourteenths on the x axis. Almost done. Is the vertex a minimum point or a maximum point? Well, that's cupped up, so let's draw a picture. It is the lowest point, so it's going to be a minimum point. And so the minimum value is going to be the K number, and our K number was 115 over 28. Notice you don't write K equals 115 over 28. You just write 115 over 28. Now, we know what, what K is, we know what H is, we know what A is, so we can do this very easily to write this in vertex form or transformation form. No, I don't have to do that. Um, five fourteenths. Okay, and the domain, it doesn't matter how ugly the equation is or how nice it is, all quadratic functions have domain negative infinity to positive infinity, or x equals all real numbers, or x such that x is all real numbers. Now 12, state the range of a cupped up parabola. Cupped up parabola. The range is going to go from K up forever to positive infinity. And our K is 115 over 28. So our range is going to be 115 over 28 with a bracket, comma, infinity. Now, the open interval stuff. Now, 
Notice that for a cupped up, this is decreasing. This is increasing. This goes down from left to right. This goes up from left to right. But we look at it in terms of the x-axis. So this is going to be decreasing from negative infinity to h and increasing from h to infinity. h to infinity, yes. And my doggie just came in. Hello, Ayla. Got to give her a growl. Mwah. Okay, she's telling me it's time for lunch. So, we will be finished really, really fast, really, really soon. Um, all right, so this is increasing. So, increasing is going to be H to infinity. And, uh, yeah, and decreasing is going to be negative infinity to H. But look at this, decreasing. I am leaving out my negative signs. Now I don't know if I'm even responsible for that. Okay, negative infinity to H. Yeah, okay, yeah. I got twisted around, didn't I? I am going to have to go in and make changes. And that's it. That is it. So it's decreasing. Yes from negative infinity to H, increasing from H to infinity. That's it, gang. You are free. But we're going to do this some more tomorrow. How about doing the homework? We'll do the homework, although you can breeze through the homework now. Any comments, any questions? Okay. Have a great day. Yeah, you have a great day too. Bye, Ms. Barbara. Have an awesome day. You too. Bye.